Hi, I'm Lindell Higgins from GiveOxygen.com and I am going to teach you today how to measure your oxygen using a pulse oximeter. Before we get started, of course, please do your own research and also consult with a medical professional to make sure that you are doing things that are right and specific to you and your needs. But I wanted to give you this information to give you as many tools possible to combat COVID-19. A little bit of background, my husband um, had three lung collapses and kind of in that and also him having asthma problems, it led us to have a lot of tools for the respiratory system and a lot of knowledge to keep it healthy and to check in and be able to understand what is actually going on in your body. The reason that measuring oxygen is important with COVID-19 is the pneumonia and the respiratory piece of it. If you get pneumonia, um, your body can be deprived of oxygen. And when your organs are deprived of oxygen, they can shut down. And that is what is leading to death in, in this pandemic. For me personally, I wanted something to help measure my own health in case I got sick to give the doctors more information if I needed to call them so I'm not um, jumping the gun and things like that. So here's how these guys work. It measures your heart rate and the oxygen concentration in your blood. Um, so Obviously, it's important to do your own research. What should my oxygen concentration be depending on my age and health and um, medical history? But just so you know, on average, they want your reading to be 95 and higher. That is where people should be. You can take that number and do with it what you are comfortable doing. Um, and then also they say when it gets to between 80 and 85, that's when your body starts to show that you are oxygen deprived, that you're having cognitive trouble and things like that. So where you really want this measurement to be is between 95 and 100. Something really interesting, kind of side tangent, um, when my husband had his lung collapse, um, the in the entire side of the lung collapsed, um, but he actually always maintained um, a 98% oxygen level or higher. Um, I personally think it's because he was kind of used to having asthma problems and he, although he was in pain, he was very calm and he was taking normal breaths and being very conscientious about what was going on. And so it allowed him to not have any other complications other than the horribleness of a lung collapse. So let's try these and how these work. So um, depending on which one you have, the numbers will be in different spots, but basically it measures your heart rate and your oxygen level. So I'm gonna turn mine on. Okay. And I know that this means that it's ready. Again, you need to read your directions. And so you need to put your finger inside it and close it. And again, of course, read the directions. It's like taking your temperature. You need to just sit with it and breathe like a normal human and give it a second and see what it says. It says that my oxygen concentration is 98. And so you wanna be somewhere between 95 and 100. So we're in the clear. Why I really like having this tool is because I like having information. I love information. Um, and so if for some reason I'm worried about my oxygen level, I can take it and I can look at it and I either know, nope, I need to go to the hospital or no, everything is okay. Plus, if you do get sick, it's obviously important to call your doctor and let them know your symptoms. And if you do have this, not only will the doctor be able to listen to how you're feeling, but they will have um, 
a measured, tangible bit of information to put together to let you know what they think is best for you to do. So, thank you for watching.